And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them. But the people held them in high esteem. Such a move of God was happening in the book of Acts. This is after Jesus has, Jesus has, he has died on the cross, he's risen from the dead, and he's ascended now to the right hand of the Father. Defeated death that we might have a way, right? No longer do we need to sacrifice. No longer do we need to follow the law and be good enough. But, but now Jesus has, been our, has become our good enough. He's covered what we couldn't cover. And the church is, is, is moving through the power of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And in, in chapter 5, it's come to a place where, where signs and wonders are happening regularly. And the people are together. And there's a, there's a group of people that say, I know it's true. I just don't dare to join it. No one, no one can deny when something happens in your life. If you get a new job, no one's going to be like, I don't know if that's true if you got a new job. It's just a matter of whether or not you give God the credit. And it's a matter of whether or not they do. Now, I don't need to force them to do it. I just got to do what the Lord put on my heart, to give him praise when he moves and to give him praise when I feel like he doesn't move. Everyone knew what was happening. And every Christian in the city knows we should be evangelizing. And every Christian in the city knows we should be discipling better. And every Christian in the city knows we should be, we should be giving of our time and our resources and empowering. Every Christian in the city knows. But some will dare to do. And others won't. Some will dare to step out. And some will stand up and say, you know what? That's not right. This is right. That's not truth. This is truth. We base truth so much on what passes over time. The longer it passes, it must be true. It's time the church start basing truth on what comes out of the mouth of God and not what passes over time. Because what comes out of the mouth of God will pass over time. But what always passes over time is not always true. Some dared to join and some did not. But you know, even the people that didn't, didn't join, they held them in high esteem. People may privately think you're doing a really great job, but publicly just may not tell you that. Privately, they may wish that they were doing what you were doing, but publicly they won't say anything. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord multitudes, both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. Such a move of God was happening that one of the men of God, Peter, was going around praying for who was sick and who was hurting and who needed Jesus and people were getting saved and all this, that it was such a powerful move of God that they put him out in the streets. Peter didn't even have to go over and talk to him or touch him. Just his shadow came by. And if his shadow came by them, they were healed. And the people also gathered in the towns of Jerusalem, bringing the sick, those who were afflicted by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. My title for tonight in this now um, mini message is Signs and Shadows. Signs and Shadows. And here's what I want to say. It's very simple what I have in my heart to say to the church tonight. For those who are watching online and those who are here present, this is very simple what I have. I need to remind us the power that is in our shadow. So as you're taking your seat, you can just say, there's power in my shadow. There's power in my shadow. You halfway believed it. That's pretty neat. There's power in my shadow. We've been, we've been looking at some incredible scriptures in this time that we've been calling signs and wonders. And, and we, we've looked over the last few weeks, and the first week we got into Signs and Wonders, the, the title was, We Got the Keys, right? And so it was like, we got the keys to our new place. We'll be moving in in a few weeks. We're so excited about it. But it was so much bigger than that because it was, we got the keys. And it was, it was opening up our minds and our hearts to the idea that God has given us keys 
to unlock doors that have great opportunity. But many times we're wondering why doors are not opening that we think should be opening. And I wonder if the reason that sometimes some external doors are not unlocked how they should be with the keys that he's given us is because there's some, there's some doors inside of us that first need to be unlocked to prepare us to walk through those doors. And we want to see, we want to see like, like, like family members, doors open up to know Jesus and, and, and new job opportunities and, and faith and favor and people healed and all this. And God wants to know that we're really in it and love him. God wants to remind us that he gave us the gift of hospitality and open up a door on the inside first. We looked at the next week we called it Manufactured by Faith. How important it is in a believer's life, what they're thinking about, what they're speaking. And how we walk around and we say we're Christians, but we think and we talk like lost people. And then we wonder why our life looks like everyone else's life. And it all roots back to what we think about and what we talk about. When we think about truth and we talk about truth, then we end up living truth. And when we don't, we don't. Then we looked at the next week, we called it Filled with the Holy Ghost. And we looked at the story of the woman who, who was in great need, and, and the prophet came to her and said, take as many jars as you can, gather them up to your house, take the little bit of oil that you have, and start filling the oil into the jars. And she started filling the oil into the jars, and the oil never ran out until the jars ran out. And how many times the move of the Holy Spirit in and around us is limited by us. That we have such a small faith. If it was us and we were in the story, we would have got like two jars. And then the oil would have ran out. And we would have said, well, God's not really as big as we thought. And he would have said, no, your faith is smaller than you thought. And we looked at another week, you ain't seen nothing yet. Believing truly that God's word that he said in us, we'll see even greater things. Even greater things will be done by, by the people then we're done in the past. We look to the past and we think it, the best days have passed us, but, but really I think the greatest days and the greatest moves of God are in front of us because we should have more faith than we've ever had. We should have more faithful people than we've ever had. We should be building upon previous generations and instead what we do is we go to the next thing and try to figure something else out instead of building upon what previous generations have left us. Then we looked at the story where, where Jesus is sleeping in the boat and there's a big storm happening in the boat and Jesus comes out and, he, and he, he calms the storm. He says, peace, be still. And how I wonder if, if we were in the boat. I, I wonder sometimes if we would have even woke Jesus up. We might have never, never even thought he could do anything about it. And we would have just <laughs> sat there in the storm. And then last week we looked at the story of this paralyzed man who was trying to get to Jesus and his four friends brought him to the house where Jesus was, but there was no way to get into the house. So they went on the roof, they cut a hole in the roof and they lowered the man through there. And Jesus saw their faith and he said to the man who was paralyzed, he said, your sins are forgiven. And then later on, a few moments later, he healed him. He got up and walked out. And how so many times Jesus has made a way for us, but we make a way for no one else. Like, we have received the love of God, but we don't go so that someone else might receive the love of God. And we make small of the way that he made for us. And so that brings us to today, the last week of this time, Signs and Wonders. And next week is going to be incredible. I'm so excited for what God's going to do. I feel like he's just been revealing some awesome stuff for this next month for us. So don't miss it. But it brings us to today, Signs and Shadows. It's an equally crazy story. There's a man walking through the streets and people are coming into the Lord and all this is happening. So they're bringing the sick and they're bringing the hurting and they're bringing the lame and they're like, there's such a move of God happening in that moment that a shadow from a man is going by through the power of the Holy Spirit and the shadow is healing people. And so I say to us, have we forgotten the power that's in our shadow? See, the shadow is going, depending on where the light is, is going behind you it's going in front of you. It's basically not where you are. And many times we get into a place where we want to see God move and we're beginning to trust him in our faith and we want to see everything happen right here in this moment, right now. And God, if you're real, won't you do it? And here it is. And many times that's the plans that he has and so it is. 
I trust that God is sovereign. And if he'll move in the shadow of someone else, then won't he move in my shadow? Was there something more special about Peter than any of us? No, he was probably worse than you. I mean, think about it. Like, you would think of yourself if Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times tonight, you could at least not do it three times in one night. Peter couldn't. Peter, the Lord looked him dead in the face and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Talk about deflating. This is Peter we're talking about. Peter, so we're going to hype him up to be better than us? He's not better than us. Only thing he is was probably more willing than us. The only thing he knew, maybe that we don't know, is how truly deep the Father's love is. How forgiving Jesus was. And I want to tell us tonight that God has placed so much power inside of you. So much of the Holy Spirit and the life-giving power of Jesus Christ inside of you. Not, not, I mean, Peter, sure, but inside you, he has placed a deposit of the living God, the freshness of the Holy Spirit, a life-giving vessel, mouth and lips that move and can speak up for the authority. He placed it inside of you. So much power that your shadow can affect people's lives. Where you've been can affect people's lives. Where you're going can affect people's lives. I said, felt like earlier, I'll say it again. The power of God has been deposited to us. Now, it's no credit to me. It's a credit to the Father. And God's power is so rich and so full in every one of us that this little piece of lint, see it right there? Zoom in now. Do you see it? Do you see it fall? Did you zoom in with your eyes? Yeah. Put on your super specs. But this little piece of lint should be changing and affecting lives because it came in contact with the child of the living God. That you should walk into places and they should just, the atmosphere should just shift. Instead, what happens is you walk into a place and your atmosphere shifts. And we say, we don't know if evil spirits and demons and stuff is real and all that. Well, yeah, well, then how come when you walk into a place and you, your personality just totally shifts and your ability to speak up for God's boldness totally shifts, how is that not the cosmic powers of evil darkness and force at play happening in this world today? But what should be happening is our level of worship every single day, our level of seeking after the Father every single day, being in the presence of God every single day should should match or supersede the level of worship where we just were in this room. So much so that every place we go to, our shadow, if we're not even walking into a store, we're not even going to eat there, we're not even shopping there, just the sun just happens to hit in the right way and the shadow of who we are goes into that store and they're prompted to think about who God is. And that's the way it should be. And this is no shaming or condemning or saying that you're not enough or whatever. The, the thing is, I, what I'm saying is, you are enough. God made you enough. You can try as hard as you want. You still are enough if you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so you don't have to effort it and you don't have to earn it and you don't have to be it. He, said, he is it for you. All you have to do is walk in it. But we downplay it. We, we minimize it. We spend so much time trying to be like everybody else and then on the side are wondering why we're like everybody else. And it's like, what do you mean? He set you apart. He made you new. For anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. And so let us stand up and let us begin to walk in what God has called us to do. And not believe that it's a past thing, but believe it's a real thing and it's happening now. And that truly the power of the living God is in us. And if that is true, then he will use any fiber of what he has to move through us. To touch lives. He'll use a shadow if he needs to use a shadow. He'll use a word if he needs to use a word. 
a high five, a handshake, a glance. He'll use whatever he needs to use to be for his glory. You got to think about your shadow. Like I said, it's not where you are. It's, it's where you were or where you're not yet. Many times we get so frustrated and we begin to let our faith slip with God because, because we're, we're, we're wanting to see signs and wonders and we're wanting to see them where we are. But our shadow is where they're happening. It's where we're going. And everything we're praying for this week and everything we're believing God for this week and we're trusting and we're knowing that God's going to move is all for next month. We just don't know it yet. We just don't know the time when he's releasing it. And we look back and we, we wonder why things that we've walked away from seem like they be, could be great to go back to. And I say, of course they could be great to go back to. That doesn't mean they're for you. That means your shadow is there and you touch them. And every door you walk through and every relationship you used to have and everything that used to be where you were should all be blessed and good. That not, does not mean you need to go back to it. That just means that your life is so powerful through the living God that everything you've touched has been changed. And so you used to date them, but you don't have to date them now. That's fine. Let them be who they were. It's like they're being changed by who you were when you were with them. You're not even with them now, and the remnant is still going on and changing who they are. So don't think, maybe I should go back to that job. Maybe I should go back to that place. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. All I'm saying is your shadow, if it's behind you, is working miracles and you're walking the other direction. Trust that process. Trust what used to be and leave it where it is and let God work how he works and don't get jealous and just know that he's an almighty, powerful God. And so when we say fill me up, just know there's free refills. You don't got to question or ask. I went to a little place the other day and they were like, I was at the register and getting the food and she said, the water is free. And I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> the water is free almost everywhere. It's ever my house. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You got to pay for it at your own house, but you go out to eat and you get free water? Can't explain that. Anyways, mysteries of the Lord. And so I just said, I just said politely, like, okay, thanks. Like, I didn't know what, I'd never been there before. But then I realized that they didn't have like water you could just get that was like, you know, from the dispenser. They had bottled water. And it, it was free. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, no difference to me. So I grabbed one of the bottles and I just like was drinking it while I was eating my food. The problem is like, I'm trying to stay hydrated, you know, keep my skin healthy and stuff. And um, it's important, guys. It's important. And so I drank that water and I needed a new water. And I went back and it was like smallest print ever. One water bottle per customer per visit. And I was like, the water's not free. One water is free. There's a big difference. I would have drank less slow. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> I would have drank more slowly. Slower. Uh, to all my English teachers out there, sorry. She tricked me. Water wasn't free. So I took another one. I said, I'll count this to my next visit. Next time, I'll, next time I won't get water. I'm counting this one now. I counted it early. I was really thirsty. She didn't mind. She's like, whatever, there's a whole fridge of it. We don't got to worry. We spend a lot of time thinking if God blesses somebody else, we got to worry about if he's going to bless us. If God's healing somebody else, is he going to heal us? If God's saving their spouse, is he going to save my spouse? We gotta, we, we're thinking so many thoughts like, God's giving it to them. Is he going to give it to me? Here's the thing. He's not running out. He's not, he's not like, I only got three left. I got to decide who it's going to. There's plenty enough. He's never running out. There's ne there never won't be enough. And so let us rest easy and know this. There's power in our shadow. There's more power in our shadow than there is in the fullness of, of who the enemy is. And what he wants to do, yeah, I'll say it again. There's more power in our shadow. I feel like sometimes I miss, I miss the goodness that God has in some of these things. There's more power in our shadow 
than there is in the fullness of who the enemy is. And what we do is we're afraid of the enemy's shadow when he's afraid of our shadow. He has the right to be afraid. We don't. Our shadow alone can displace all the plans that he has. If we'll just position ourselves rightly before the Father and let the shadow go where it needs to go, it will destroy all that the enemy has for us. But there's nothing he can do. So you know what he does? He tries to minimize, use whatever he can to minimize the power that we think we have to walk in freedom and grace. I don't know if I can overcome this addiction. I don't know if I, if I can be good enough. Let me just tell you, you can't. Jesus did, and so walk in that power. And so the next time the enemy tries to say, I don't know if you can overcome it, you say, Jesus already died for it. You speak the truth of what it needs to be. Would you stand to your feet as we close? It says in the text, it said, many didn't dare to join them. And so I ask you tonight, do you dare to be one of the ones who joins? Do you, do you dare that signs and wonders would come so strong off of the people of God they would come off of your shadow? Do you, do you dare to be the one who this week would really say, like, like say over your life only what God has already said, that I'm a child of God and no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that I'm a child of God and I'm seated high upon, upon all things, that, that, my, that my enemy has become my footstool, that I'm a child of God and he has created a table for me in the presence of my enemies, that I'm a child of God and who can say that I'm something that God hasn't already said that I am? And so if God doesn't say I'm a liar, then I'm not a liar. And if God doesn't say I'm an idiot, then I'm not an idiot. And if God doesn't say I'm a sinner, then I'm not a sinner. I'm saved by grace, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'll be only who he says that I am and not who anyone else says who I am. And what my past was is not who I am. And what I am now is not where my future self will be. I trust what God has. And so let's let it be our truth in our life. That signs and wonders will come out of us because the power of God is upon us to do mighty great works.